Good morning, viewers. It's another Saturday morning, and we give God all the praise and honor for another opportunity to, you know, come on this platform to share His Word and to encourage hearts. I want to first just welcome everyone who um, will view and who are viewing at this time. I pray that our time together will be a good one as we look at God's word and look at this theme that um, has been dealt with, uh, that we've been dealing with for for the past couple of days. I don't want to welcome all the, 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 the leaders and members of the various tabernacles, you know, Spanish Town Tabernacle, Greater Portmore Tabernacle, Kingston Tabernacle, those are the Maypen Outreach and all those member tabernacles across Jamaica and those located in the, the United States. I, I welcome you. All right. So this week we've been looking at the, the theme, Ripe Harvest, Laborers Needed. Ripe Harvest, Laborers Needed. So for our devotional time this week, we've been focusing on, on that theme. And there are three passages of scripture um, from which that theme uh, stems. So you'll find those words coming from Matthew, um, Luke, and John. But the, the text that I will be using this morning, and just talking about it briefly, um, is from Matthew, specifically Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 and 38. But before... I get into it. I just invite us to say a word of prayer. Father, I, I thank you now for your grace and your mercy. I bless your name for all that, that you have done. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. And Lord, I pray for the next few minutes of this presentation that you will move our hearts to feel and see the reality that lies before us. And may we move with a sense of urgency and join in the work that is there to be done. I give you glory for this opportunity. And may your name be glorified in this session. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, as I said, the passage that I'll be looking at is Matthew chapter 10 verse sorry Matthew chapter 9 verse 37 and 38 verse 37 says then he said to his disciples the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few ask the lord of the harvest therefore to send out workers into his harvest field so this is where and this is one of the passages we find uh, where the theme originates. You know, just to give a bit of, of context as to what was going on before that. Um, Jesus had a busy day of, of ministry. Miracle after miracle he performed. In the earlier part of the, the text, we see that he raised a dead girl uh, to life again. He healed a lady who had a bleeding issue, who was hemorrhaging for over a decade. Uh, he healed a man who was, was demon-possessed, and that resulted in him being mute, unable to, to talk. So he cast out that demon. The man was able to, to speak again. He also preached and taught in, in the various, various towns that were there. And he carried out a great deal of work. Jesus was busy and he carried out a great deal of work from healing diseases and, and performing exorcisms and preaching in the, in the tones and teaching in the tones. He did a whole lot. But at the same time, he had a lot more work to be done. So here we find after after he completed that ministry, 
we see um, in verse 36, he came across a crowd of people. Sorry, he came across um, the crowds and he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. So after his, his, his busy um, period of ministry, right before him was just la a large group of, of persons who seemed like they needed guidance, who seemed like they needed help. They seemed like they, they, they needed um, something. And it is following this sight, the sight of this group of people. It is following this sight that Jesus said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So I want to I want to share with us this morning um about a few points. Um, that we, we see in the passage that will guide our, our time, our brief time this morning. All right, the first, first reality, sorry, I want to share with us two realities. The first reality is this, the, the harvest is plentiful. We, we hear that from what Jesus says. Jesus says the harvest is, is plentiful. The harvest was plentiful in the time of Jesus, right, when he was in the area of Palestine, and the harvest is plentiful today there are many persons who have not believed in jesus thousands upon thousands of souls are yet to put their faith in jesus christ more more so billions of individuals are in a state of lostness right now and they would end up in hell if they should die at this moment billions of people so when we research it, we'll find that billions of people have not come to trust in, in the sacrificial work of Jesus Christ. Now, that's a lot of people. And just to give us um, some, some statistics from uh, an organization um, called the Joshua Project that deals with you know, people groups and unreached people groups and areas of the world that have been reached. Uh, listen to these figures. The total unreached people groups are 7081 7081 now a people group is basically a group of persons with sheer language and sheer culture they have the same culture same language or you could say that this is an ethnic group so uh, in other words 7081 ethnic groups are unreached and when we say unreached it means that there is a small number of Christian witness in that ethnic group or in that uh, people group that is not sufficient to to bring the the, the, the nation to to Christ. So that's what we mean by people group. The population of unreached people groups is 3.4 billion, which makes up approximately 41.6 percent of the world's population. You hear that? Unreached people groups. 41.6% of the world's total population. That's close to 50% of the world's population being unreached. No, there are areas in the world where the gospel has not gone. There is no gospel witness there. There is no church there. There is no Christian there. There is no missionary worker there. There are areas in the world where the gospel is yet to go and the reason some of these places have not been reached is because there is hostility in those environments once you come in that country or in those places and declare that you're a christian or declare that you are propagating a religious religious idea they will they will kill they will kill so that is why some of those places are are hard to reach but that's the reality the harvest is plentiful when we look at the landscape of the world look at the landscape of the world we will find that there as i said billions upon billions of people who have yet to hear, hear the gospel and who have yet yeah, yet to hear the gospel for the first time and who have yet to come to faith in jesus christ the harvest is plentiful 
So this was the reality that, that, that was right before Jesus. Large crowds of people were before him. And what came to him was this. The harvest is plentiful. Um, if you know anything about farming. I don't know anything about farming. But if you know anything about farming. You know the field. You know when a, when a, when a field is, is just set with, with ready crops. Right? And the field is large. And when you look to the left, the harvest stretches all the way to the left. When you look to your right, the harvest stretches all the way to the right. When you look before you, the harvest stretches all the way in front of you. And when you, in all of those directions, there seems, from where you are standing, there seems to be no end to, to the field. And Jesus is saying the same thing. When you scan the world, you look in the different parts of the world, there is just a lot of work to be done. A lot of people out there who need to hear the gospel. There is just a great deal. The task is just a great, great deal. But the second reality I want us to, I want to share with you is, is that the workers are few. And that's a, that's a problem. The workers are few compared to the extent of the gospel work that is to be carried out. The number of laborers is, is not enough. Now this, this verse is not a, a charge or an indictment against the, the believers. It's just stating a reality. The laborers are, are few. It's not saying laborers are few because the laborers are lazy. It's just stating that the workers are limited. The workers... Um, that compared to the need of the day, compared to the extent or the vastness or the magnitude of the work that is need is needed to be carried out, the workers, the workers are are few. Now I just want to clarify something: the the number of workers in no way prevents the completion of the task. The workers in no way prevents the completion of the task but what the numbers do however is is cause the the work not to be completed and not to not to progress at a good pace so if there are thousands of workers we need thousands more in order to make the the, the work progress a bit a bit faster and a bit better but the work at the end of the day will be completed but the issue is there is a need for more workers to be sent out on the mission field there is a need for laborers the great work that is there needs a great number of people to carry it out to fulfill it so there's a great work but we need a great number of of workers to to carry out this work and many people say, boy, um, many hands make the, the work work light. And we, we know that of instances where there's a lot of work to do and you have few people and you, the, the few people who are there taking on the, the greatest field strain. But if more persons came along and joined in and participated in the task, the work would be done quicker and the work would be done more, more effectively. It's the same idea. More workers are are needed to carry out, to fulfill the, the the great mandate and the great task that is before before us. And the last thing I want to share with us, um, as I you know draw to a close, is the response. As we look in the text, as I was saying, the text is Matthew nine thirty seven and thirty eight. As we look in verse thirty eight. Jesus says, Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. That's an interesting statement. Those instructions, that instruction is simple. Ask in, in light of, in light of the magnitude of the work that is needed to be carried out. And in light of the reality that there is a small number of laborers out there on the, on, on the global stage trying to carry out this work. In light of these two realities, 
What should we do, Jesus? Jesus says, ask the Lord of the harvest. In other words, pray to the Lord of the, the harvest to, to send out workers into his mission field. And you know, the word really, um, for, for ask is really beseech. It, it, there, there carries the idea of like an earnest uh, plea. So Jesus is saying, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out and raise up workers into his harvest field. Having been, having been gripped, having been gripped with the urgent need that is before them, they should earnestly pray to God for him to call forth his, his servants. That is what Jesus wanted them to do. Having been gripped with what they are seeing before them, the large crows, having been gripped by that sight, what Jesus wanted them to do is to pray to God, to the God of the harvest, to send more workers into his harvest field. No, I want us to, to note uh, one crucial thing that Jesus made, um, that Jesus um, communicated from verse 38. And it is this, that God is the, the, the owner of the harvest field. God is the owner of the harvest field. The harvest field, which is the whole world, is not just running by itself. He is the master of it. He is the Lord of the harvest field. He is the Lord of over all people groups that I just mentioned, all the billions of people groups. He is Lord and master over that, that missions field, that area, that region where persons haven't heard the gospel. He has authority over every the lives of every single person everywhere in, in the world. He is in charge of the field. It is his field. And he is the Lord of the harvest. He is calling and sending people in, in various places across the world where the need is because he knows where the need is. So that's why you should pray to the God of the harvest. He knows on his globe exactly where the people groups are. That may not, not have been recorded on the system. He knows where these people groups are. He knows where the need is. And he is strategizing. And he is planning. And he is orchestrating his plans for his work to be completed. Therefore, disciples, pray to the God of the, the harvest. Beseech, beseech him. What he instructs us to do is to pray and never stop praying. What he's instructing his disciples to do and what he's instructing us to do in light of these two realities is to pray and never stop praying. Sounds simple. But it is significant. So I want us to, to take away these two uh, points. I pray that as we we look at this theme and as we close off today on this theme we we see the urgency let's see the the urgency um if we're honest most of us know that we know that the harvest is plentiful we know that there are a lot of persons out there needing to hear the gospel we we know that but for most of us we we don't feel the sense of urgency we don't feel the weightiness of the task that is before us jesus didn't want them to just know the the reality he wanted them to feel the weight of the reality that is before them so there's no time for us to waste as souls hang in 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 the balance every second every minute every every tick on the clock matters Every believer and every church should have this, have, have proclaiming the gospel, whether in the community or being part or supporting others who are proclaiming it across the nation. Every believer and every church should be a part of God's work in, in the global scene. It should be the priority of a believer. It should be the priority of every, every church where other things get a secondary place in the church 
and have evangelism and have the propagation of the, the gospel at its helm. So I want us to, to, to see the, the urgency, to see the weightiness of what is before us. And the last thing is to let, let's see God earnestly. So let's see the urgency and let's see God earnestly. God, Jesus wanted his disciples to seek the Lord, to beseech the Lord. And we too are called to beseech the Lord on, in regard to the magnitude of the work. May we plead with the Lord and the King of Harvest to call his servants to get to work on reaping his harvest. Seeing the need, seeing the need should drive us to our knees. We must beseech God to move the hearts of his people. Let's plead with God to, to move the hearts of those persons who have, or those Christians who have um, entered retirement or who have been in retirement for a while and there's, there's just relaxation. Help, let's pray to God that, that he will move their hearts to, 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 to do something of eternal significance in their retirement. Not to say that they can't relax, but there is much that they can do with an eternal perspective. I pray to God that he will move the hearts of young people who are leaving, leaving college to be a part of God's missionary work, whether to go um, with their profession, to be doctors on the mission field, to be pharmacists on the mission field, to, to, to use their engineering skills on the mission field, whatever it is. I pray to, pray to God for, for persons to, to give financially or give whatever they can to those who are going. Pray to God do this because when God calls someone, when God moves someone, someone's heart, they can't shake it. They can't just ignore it. They will have to act. Therefore, pray, see God earnestly, plead with God. Plead with God to stimulate people for his global cause, to have his name spread across the world. God has a passion for his name being spread globally and we too as believers should have a passion for his name being spread globally. We must plead with God to move our hearts as well. So we're praying for people. We're pleading with God for people, believers, for their hearts to be moved. And we're pleading with God for our, for him to move our hearts. That if we are called to go, that he will call us to go and that we will go. We must pray that, that if it is that we don't feel the call to go, we must feel the call to give. Whatever way we can, if you want to sign up with a missions organization just for the purpose of giving support to those who are actually going, may we take, this necess take the steps to do so. So it's either that we are going to go into the well, go into the trenches, the hard places, the messy places, into the muck and do the dirty work, or we will be people who hold the rope to those who are going in, giving support to them. Which will it be? Isaiah, after he saw the great vision of, of God, holy, high and lifted up, said, woe is me, I'm dead now. Later on, Lord, he heard the voice of the Lord asking, who shall I send? Who will go? And Isaiah's response was, Send me, send me. The task before us is, is a great one and we should not, should not ignore it. We should be committed to it. We should be laborers who love laboring. And we have to pray to the Lord for, for his boldness and for his courage to take the gospel to our neighbors, right, in our communities, take, take the, the gospel to our friends and family members and our co-workers to take the gospel to the world through social media are sending um contributing or supporting someone who's actually going physically but there's much work to be done it's a daunting task but it's a task that will be completed god will ensure that it is completed it is his harvest field 
He's the Lord of the harvest. He's strategizing. He's coordinating everything. And he says to us, he instructs us to pray, plead with him. And you know the thing about, about this? It, there's, a, there's a direct connection between prayer and the, the mission or the movement of God. So it's not our planning. It's not, not Jesus didn't instruct his disciples to do more planning. He instructed them to, to do more praying. And as we pray, we participate in, in what God is doing in on the global scene. You hear what I said? In our praying, in my praying, in your praying, we participate in God's global work across the nations. Therefore, do, don't ever feel, do not ever feel, if you pray in regard to uh, Matthew 9, 37 and 38 for, for Gahim to send out workers, do not feel that your prayer is in vain. Oftentimes we feel like our prayer not going anywhere, but this is, this right here, is an encouragement to, to pray for those who are going and pray for God to raise up people to go. That prayer will never go in vain because God will, will just use your prayer. Use our prayer to mobilize, to initiate, to sustain his, his work. So intercession, intercession is what will initiate and what will sustain and what will keep those persons who we don't see going into the mission field. So we're praying about God sending people and God is sending people and we would not know who is sending out the, the mass of people he is sending all because we took it to him in prayer. So don't despair prayer but delight in it because God does great things through do it. So may we see the harvest is plentiful, feel the urgency of it, and move forward with, with a resolve that we can do our part, that we will do our part, that we will make a commitment to do our part in bringing the gospel to the harvest field of the world. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. Father, what lies before us is such a great task. It's such a daunting one when we look on the map of the world and just to see the places that, that the gospel has not gone or the gospel has gone, but there is no strong Christian witness in those places. We may feel discouraged, but Lord, you will fulfill your mission. You are the Lord of the harvest. So right now I pray for those who are watching and I pray even for myself that you, by your Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of God, will give us boldness to go, will give us the boldness to speak, because we have in our hearts the gospel of Jesus Christ, the dynamite power, the, the power that can save lives. The most wretched of people can be touched and impacted and changed by your gospel. So help us now, Lord God, to, to feel the weightiness that is before us, and go with the gospel. Strip us from all fear. Fear of people. Fear of questioning. Fear of just not knowing how they will respond. Strip us from all those fears, Lord. And make us bold as a lion as we share your word. Give you glory for this time now. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I, I pray that God would have encouraged your heart and stirred you and stirred me. Um, join us tomorrow morning on uh, Greater Pomore, Greater Pomore's Tabernacle page. Join us at 10 a.m. for their service. And join us at um, 11 a.m. for Divine Worship at Spanish Town Tabernacle. So I, I pray that We'll all have a good day, uh, a godly day, and may we, may we be one of the, the laborers in God's harvest field and spread His glory. Amen.